Hey, uh, once again, this is Cassidy, Kyle. We got Dimitri here today. Once again, Trigger Point Tuesday, and we're going to follow suit of what we talked about last week. And, and so the, 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 the crazy part about what we talked about last week is I want you to compare your arm to your leg. And so when we think about that, the hand is the foot, um, the forearm is the shin, and the lower leg. And then, of course, we've got our quads, which is up into our bicep and our tricep, and then our shoulder is our glutes. Crazy way to think about it, but the idea here is what we want you to think about is there's so many different sports that we do on an everyday basis that you have to rely on hand mobility and strength of the shoulder. Mm -hmm. Just like we have to think about we rely on foot mobility and strength of the hips and the glutes to be able to move that core to extremity movement. The core to extremity movement here is from the shoulder to the hand. Because if you move extremity to core, what does that mean? You can really injure yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Why is that, Kyle? The, the same thing is from the, the ground working the way up. As soon as you close off the chain, whether you go into a, a pull-up or whether you go into a push-up, all of a sudden, the, the wrist now defines mobility for the shoulder, much the same way the ankle defines mobility for the hip. Okay. So if you're going into a push-up and, and you can't get enough, uh, let's say, extension or dorsiflexion, which is what it would be in the foot, then all of a sudden the elbow is going to pay the price and the shoulder is going to pay the price for that. Crazy. So, so, to, yeah. so that what you're saying is if I lose mobility in the foot, the ankle is going to be jeopardized. The knee is going to have to rotate just like the elbow rotates. Mm -hmm. And so there's, there's supination, there's pronation, there's transverse movements in the arm just like the leg, right? Mm -hmm. And so then the hip is then going to really uh, be affected just like the shoulder is going to be affected. So we ha all have to use all the muscles, independent yet as one, to have that structural integrity. Right. So if we're throwing a baseball, if we're hitting a baseball with a bat, if we're playing golf, or of course CrossFit, which you know you're a big strapping, you know kind of CrossFit guy. So let's look at your mobility real quick and see kind of what he's got. Okay. Right. So the idea is go ahead and go up into a rack position. We worked this side a bit yesterday, and what you can see is he still actually has you know this greater range of motion here. Hopefully we'll be able to get the same yield out of uh, left right side versus left side. A bit of my dyslexia is showing up. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to increase this range of motion here, but we also want to increase the opportunity for that wrist to get up underneath the bar as well or the hand. One of the, th one of the things about the elbows here, we talk about the, this being very similar to the structure of the legs. The, that long head of the tricep right here crosses two joints, much like the rectus femoris does. So whenever he's in elbow flexion and shoulder flexion, now we lengthened that, that tricep on both ends because it attaches to that scapula so we can see here better range of motion in that long head of the tricep not as good range of motion here in this in this tricep. Okay crazy so go ahead and put your hands down onto the table there and what I'm going to do I'm going to walk around on this side because we haven't worked this side and so the idea is go ahead and come forward with your with your uh, with your upper body there and so we're looking for Kyle go ahead and go around on the other side this is dorsiflexion we're talking about dorsiflexion of the hand and so as you come forward we see the restricted movement here it's all the, it's all stuck up so we're saying right here is your antib back here is the soleus so then Kyle you're saying that the tricep acts more like the quads, mm -hmm. correct? And then what is the bicep? Is the bicep, are we going to say that's more like the hamstring? It functions much more like the hamstrings. I mean, think of one of the hamstrings is called the biceps femoris. It has two heads, much like biceps here. It has two different heads, so a similar structure. That is awesome. So what we want to do, go ahead and put a slight bend into the elbow and see there we can fake the dorsiflexion here by bending the elbow, mm -hmm. just like we can fake the dorsiflexion in the foot by bending the knee. So unfortunately, when you have load, whether it be a... a uh, well, really, if we're talking about a closed chain movement, any weight in the hand, no matter what, you're going to put a slight bend in the elbow to be able to control that load if you can't find range of motion in your wrist, right? Right. So, therefore, the tennis elbows of the world and all of the strain, the, 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 the pitcher when they're playing baseball, you know, all these things become problems. So, what we want to do, go ahead and test that again. Go ahead and stand up. Go forward. We see the restriction all through this area here. We see a little bit more on that side. Once again, we worked that side yesterday. So, let's see if we can increase that, okay? Go ahead and stand up. One more thing that I want you to see before we get into this programming is I want you to see the rotational forward with the, the shoulder. 
Now, we, can, we also see this in the, in the hips as well, mm-hmm. correct? Mm-hmm. And how do we equate that when, the, sh- the, when the, the hips are rotated forward, that butt typically, what I say is, goes out like a buffet table. You're always going to remember that one. And so the idea is you're, you're going to compromise the, 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 the structure of the shoulder in its entirety, right? Yes, that whole, that whole shoulder will start to rotate forward. You'll get an actual uh, anterior tipping of the scapula, which means it's not as stable back here on that scapulothoracic joint. And it goes back to the same thing. If we're trying to do a push-up and we can't get enough range of motion here, chances are this is going to dip forward. And then you're going to jeopardize all those tissues that come through the shoulder. Nice. So you don't really say you have an anterior tilt to the shoulder, but you've just said it. Mm-hmm. Kyle has just defined the shoulder as having an anterior tilt. I love it. So now let's, let's go ahead. We're going to talk about some programming here. Way to free up the extensors and flexors of the forearm. Okay, just like we, we free up the, the lower leg. And then we're going to go into the tricep. And then we're going to go into pec major minor. And let's see if we don't get a better range of motion out of that, okay? Absolutely. All right, so go ahead and come down. Now, there's a couple of different ways. Let's go ahead and use the footballer first. And so the idea here is that we want to go in through our scrubbing, our mashing, and our distal movement, okay? So our scrub, go ahead and put your hand on top there. And I want you to think zones first. Let me show them this. Take your hand off. We got zone one, zone two, zone three, and zone four. Work around the artwork. One, two, three, and four, okay? So we're going to go, let's go into zone two and three, okay? So we're going to be right there. Put your opposite hand on top. So first, let's go ahead and go forward and back. One, two, three, and four. Get that distal movement up and down. One, two, three, four. Now let's get a scrubbing circle. One, two, three three, remember to breathe, and four, in opposite direction, one, two, three, and four. So now our, mash side to side, our go ahead. Our techniques don't change, myofascial compression techniques, we have to keep introducing motion in different planes of motion to allow the muscles to work, because all muscles work in all planes of motion at any given time, they typically just will dominate one plane. So very similar to the same way we would roll through the soleus, the same way we would roll through the quads. So I just kind of wanted to feel what's going on. Pretty sticky up in there, right, Dimitri? Oh, yeah. And so the idea, go ahead and come up with a hand and back down. Come up with a hand and back down. Now flip it over. We're going to get the extensors here. Go ahead and put your hand there. Go through that same programming. So Kyle, if we're on the back side, so we're in the, 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 the antib of the lower leg, right? Mm-hmm. So do you think that, that the muscles here are, are loaded on a continual basis? Yes, eccentrically, which we talk about that a lot. But those, we, we have to think about supination, pronation. So whenever that hand is rotated flat, that's a pronated position. All these muscles here are lengthened, so they're having to fight against that. Perfect. So go ahead in that position. Nope, go get back into it. Let's rotate the hand just like you would. Let's go into a rotational movement there. Two to the left, two to the right. Okay, so here's another idea. If this isn't enough pressure, which I'm sure it will be, go ahead and grab your TP ball. Let's go ahead and get into position there. We're going to lock it out. And now the specificity, Dimitri, is it a bit more specific there? Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and notice where he is. You know, if we use this hand here just as a, a judge, he's working up here in these, these strong, you know, so usually pretty powerful supinators that we need that mobility in. Yeah, absolutely. Supination in the forearm, critical. He's getting the rotational movement in the wrist there so that we can activate the muscles there. The muscle is a non-compressible cylinder, so we're building tension as we rotate the hand and really uh, start to influence the, the muscle tissue in that region. Okay, so now go ahead and we'll just release. Let's go ahead and stand up. First, go ahead and just put some movement there. And let's just see. Go ahead and drop your hands to the side. Here's the coolest part about this is you, we can now look at this shoulder, and we can see that this shoulder is slightly, ever so slightly rotated back now. Now, we can talk about that because uh, uh, Thomas Myers really coined the, we're talking about the arm line there. you got your superficial back line, your front line. We're going to influence the front line, but we're ultimately influencing the arm line there, correct? Mm-hmm. So look at the way that the shoulder is positioned. Go back down into that hand position there. And, and what I want you to do is come forward. And what you can see here, you see less restriction here. But now we've increased the distance on this side versus on the left side. Can you see that? Yeah. So, Camry, if you want to come off to the side there and you can see the difference in range of motion here, what we've done is we've allowed more dorsiflexion in the hand to occur. 
So he's going to be able to control weight that much more effectively. So better mobility through the elbow, but then much better mobility and stability in the shoulder. Mobility and stability. You got a coin for that. You coined it. What is it called? Well, I took it from, from Gary Gray, but it's most stability. Most stability. Gary Gray, we love you for that. Come back around. Let's go ahead and we're going to get tricep now. This is one of the cool ones. What we're going to do, go back down onto your knee, and we're going to go through that same programming. Think about your quads. We've got four regions of the quad there. So go ahead and go up and back down one inch, back down one inch. We're going to stay in zone one. One, two, three, and four. How's that feel, Dimitri? Pretty tender. One, two, and whoop, one, and two. That's for all those guys that don't really like what we're doing right now. Look at that hand position. Love it. Okay, we're going to go up into zone two. One, two, three, four, circular, scrubbing. One, two, three, four, back. One, two, three, four. Go ahead and get those hand up and, and back Dimitri, down. Dimitri is a great example that you can even do this with deconditioned individuals. Yeah, totally deconditioned. Doesn't work out at all. Go ahead and... Now, yeah, get a little bit more of that, that scrub it in that area right there. He's on the lateral side of the tricep, mm -hmm. Kyle, mm -hmm. which is influence and what similarity? Lateral head. So think of a lateral head of the tricep and vastus lateralis will have a similar role in stabilizing that elbow. But, but the important part, in my opinion here, is that, that long head of the tricep because it, it helps stabilize the elbow, but it also helps stabilize the shoulder. Cool. Stand up for us extension. real quick again. Let's look at our return. Go ahead and stand up and just rotate this shoulder back. Okay, now what I want to see here, look at the difference in this shoulder once again versus this shoulder. You see a dy dynamic difference. Let's go into your rack position, front position there. And now what we're looking at is, look, now we've increased this side here. So now we're ahead of this side ever so slightly. So you're going to be more comfortable getting into that position. And then go ahead and go overhead as if you were going to do a pull-up. And I want you to see the structure here. Lat is engaged. We've got a relaxed um, uh, uh, pec major minor there. Look at the hand position. Go ahead and come up with an opposing one. And look, you can all, already see the restriction there. Go ahead and turn to the side, and you can see that you've got this arm is further back there. And all we're talking about is this arm line here, mm -hmm. and this one is still slightly forward. Mm -hmm. And so we get better mobility through here as well. Remember, keep in mind that tricep. So we're going to be able to keep the, the integrity of the shoulder joint, which is ultimately going to determine, you know, injury or non-injury. I love it. You're talking about like the pillar of strength, the integrity yeah. of the joint yeah. so that you can get that uh, mobility. Mo, what is it? <laughs> Most stability. Most stability. I love it. Most stability. I've never even heard that before. But when you said it, I love it. And we got to give, who said it? Gary Gray. Gary Gray. We love you, Gary Gray. Okay, so now we're going to go into pec major minor. I'm just going to do this for you real quick. So, you know, the idea here is, here's a cool party trick. As I push into pec major minor, scoot back with the camera ever so slightly so you can get that arm moving. Mm -hmm. As I push and cross over pec major minor, I get movement mm -hmm. into the shoulder, okay? So you got to think about scope of practice. We don't put hands on bodies, but what I'm going to do for all you guys that can put hands on bodies, what I recommend is, once again, we're going to just put the arm in a good position here. Now I can control pec major minor. Take a deep breath. And release. And watch this. I'm just going to step back and put traction into the muscle. So deep, deep breath. Pec minor comes down from the core cord process down through ribs three, four, and five. So secondary respiratory muscle, I think, is a lot of times what people forget. So if we're doing that upper chest breathing or those short, shallow breaths, this muscle has a tendency to get tight. And again, it will pull that shoulder into that anterior tilt, compromise all those structures through that shoulder, glenohumeral joint, and all that. Now, you're stuff. doing a bunch of dieting right now as, right, as well, right? Yes, sir. So his tissue is so bound together. So when you're getting ready for fitness shows or you're getting ready for competitions, that kind of stuff, you got to think about your hydration, but you got to think about your tissue tolerance as well. So go ahead and rotate that shoulder back. And you see that range of motion. Go ahead and rotate the other shoulder back. See limited range of motion. Go ahead and go overhead. And look at that range of motion. Turn to the side. I want you to just see that exposure on his ear there. Go ahead and drop it. Go to the opposite side, come up with it, and you see that restriction instantly. I can see it from the front. All this is bound up. You can't even see his ear. He's got an earring in there, I'm telling you. 
It's a cool one, but the idea is you can't have this mobility here. Right. So then in a CrossFit competition, you're going to bring your head too far forward, and then you're going to start to impinge the upper neck region as well. And jeopardize breathing. And remember that this whole arm is innervated coming right through the neck. So as soon as that head goes forward, you basically cut the neurological feed to the arm. Crazy. I didn't even think about that. That's awesome. So turn to the side here. Let's go ahead and test you once more down here. And we're going to go after, once again, that dorsal flexion there. And you bring it forward. Look at how much range of motion we've created in the wrist here to allow you to have more stability in the shoulder. We've already shown that. We're going to reduce the wear and tear on the elbow. We're going to allow more freedom to move within the wrist. And then that hand is going to be able to do its job. So that the, the bottom line here, guys, is the more you try to control the movement, the more opportunity there is for error. We want freedom to movement. We want to allow you to move with the greatest amount of ease. Less effort, greatest amount of ease. Lower the heart rate, increase the performance. So once again, when you're talking about your fitness shows or you're talking about CrossFit competitions, if you don't take care of your body, if you don't make sure to maintain the muscle mass, the muscle tissue, compromise can occur, okay? Kyle, Dimitri, Cassidy, Trigger Point Tuesday. We'll see you next week, and thank you so much for watching.